For the cross has been taken to mean that man fails within himself, that man is utterly incapable of finding God that man in his own searching and questing and through the right to make his own mistake can only dig the pit of hell deeper. Our traditional religion has said man made a mess of his world and of himself and he fell into such degradation that God had to send his son to be the source of salvation and to give it to men who could not find it for themselves. And we have gone on through all of our Christian history on this major emphasis. And we are living in a day when this emphasis has been remade with shocking emphasis. This is the time of neo-orthodoxy. I have seldom used these terms with you for I haven't discussed the technical aspects of our religion being more concerned with the development of the positive way of thinking and feeling. But we are an isolated pocket in this church. And there was a day, the day in which this church was built, when liberalism had begun to make itself felt, when man once again turned to himself in his new understanding and appreciation of his own knowledge and of the history and nature of life and the world, and he said, it is our task to build a better world. We have the instruments and the tools, and we have the vision, and if we have the will, we can achieve it. There are no problems that man cannot transcend, no problems that man cannot solve. The goodness of God is there for him to discover and to use, but God will not do it alone, and he cannot do it without us. We are the instrument of God, we are the hands of God, and we can discover the will of God. We can find our own salvation, and we can make our own heaven here. And then the Second World War, following periods of turmoil and anxiety due to the bad choices of leaders in countries like Germany and Italy began to set in. And the people took a look at their decisions and they reacted in horror at their ignorance. And they once again said, Woe is me. Our wisdom is not enough. Our judgments are not enough. Our feelings are not enough. Without the supernatural help of God, we are done. And they turn back to the concept and the idea and the approach that God alone can save us and that he must do it or we will not be saved. And here in the book of Samuel is a statement that it seems to me should be the guiding light for all peoples and their religions. Hearken unto the voice of the people. God did not tell Samuel what these people had to do. He didn't, through Samuel, institute new rules and new laws. He didn't tell Samuel that he would save them against themselves. He said, listen to the people and let them make their own decisions. That through their own mistakes and through their own illuminations, they may grow that the kingdom of God may come to be within their hearts and within the world. For if God be the eternal understanding of the universe, if God be the sustaining principle of the universe, 
if God be that which is truth about the universe, then the light of God is the truth of the universe. And man will find the truth as he seeks for it. And so there comes a new sense of dignity and a new meaning. We do not achieve by someone passing laws. We do not find the kingdom by having some man on high illuminated for us. We do not achieve the goodness of God through some supernatural fiat. We find the meaning, the goodness, and the honor, and the glory through the dignity of our own discoveries. God had enough faith in his people to let them turn against his own laws, and to let them turn against his own leader. And so I say to us, as I say it to me, You only see through a glass very darkly. But you have the dignity of seeing for yourself. And when God speaks to you, he speaks to you. And he doesn't speak to anyone else. And when you speak to another, you speak to the other. And if perchance the word of God speaks through you, he will speak to the other, however it be through you. For each of us must seek for himself, and each of us must find for himself. And when we have learned through the bitter experience of making our own mistakes, we will have found the light and the truth and the glory and the beauty which is ours. And the kingdom will be in our heart. And when enough of us find the kingdom within our own heart, it will come to be in our world and we will need neither kings nor high priests.